Hello, everybody. My name is meteorologist Hutch Johnson, and we're going to talk a little bit about some pattern changes as we begin spring tomorrow on Tuesday. 10 o'clock or just after central time is the vernal equinox. And then after that, we have a shift in where storm systems will hit the West Coast and some potential for a good old fashioned winter storm or two or three through the plain states with well, the incumbent risk of strong to severe thunderstorms as well. We're going to go over a look at the storm track, and we'll look at the timing of a, a model or two. We'll look at the snowfall track on a model or two, and we'll also have details on what you can expect as we head through the first full week of spring. There'll be less than spring-like for some. Heavy rain and thunderstorms for others. And again, I invite all of you to let me know in the comments where you're watching from. It's always wonderful to have you on. Let me know your location. If you have a question, that's what makes this whole live thing interactive, right? Ask a meteorologist, if you will. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on with one forecast model's rendition of how we see the next several days panning out. Remember this. Deborah, it's wonderful to have you on from 85208. That's wonderful so very much. Thanks for watching. Now, as we check out this model's rendition, I do want to point out to you that each and every model. The farther out in time we get, the lower our confidence is that it's locked into the forecast. So that's thing one. And thing two, well, keep in mind that when we're looking at these large-scale global models, that these global models are not taking in the same amount of information as some of the high-resolution models are. They're on a bigger grid. So that the output tends to look like the impact will be bigger than it really may be. In other words, the aerial coverage of that impact can be thought to be a little bit bigger on some of these models as well. With that in mind, let's take a look at what we have going on. We're going to look at a model here. This is the American model, and we'll put this in 3D. Tilt the earth just a little bit because it's fun. And then we're going to also take a look at what we have. Hi, Gwen. Hi, Teresa. Good to have all of you on right now as we go ahead and loop the radar model here, and we'll show you once it starts loading. And I think I want to put the time back up here for you. Hey, time bar up at the top and center. Look at the nation's midsection. Winter storm north. Showers and thunderstorms down to the south. I'm going to load one in that's come all the way in here. That particular model is still uh, calculating and coming into uh, uh, the further out hours. Look at the wave of storms moving in off the west coast through the central plains. What this storm track means as storms will make landfall in the central Pacific coast and northern Pacific coast is everywhere from the northern Rocky, or northern mountains of California into the uh, Pacific Northwest, central Rockies, and northern plains. Wintry weather is going to be highly likely. And we will have a trend towards some stormy weather as the cold, dry air rocking off the mountains interacts with the Gulf Coast moisture over the next several weeks. Notice a persistent pattern, passing showers of snow, wind, cold up north, maybe even some areas of icing with that thunder chance off to the east. So without further ado, let's go ahead and time out when some of these more impactful systems may come aboard. And I do want to point out, again, caveat. The farther out in time we get, we have to put a big grain of salt on our shoulder with regards to how specific we can get. In the early ongoing here, an active pattern moving out of Calgary, Alberta, and Montana will move through the Dakotas. This is a Thursday chance of snow through the Dakotas. It will be measurable. It won't come with a boatload of wind. But look at this. Down in the southern plains, some showers and thunderstorms. The farther south you go into the Gulf, the better chance of those being a little more potent out there as well. That is, as we go into the 21st, Ooh, and that is on Thursday. Now, as we continue to advance through time, that wave moves through the Great Lakes. Oftentimes, when these little clippers move into the Great Lakes, they intensify. Widespread rain, Appalachian snow as we go through the day on, well, Friday. And then that system will really explode in the Pacific Northeast as it starts scooping moisture off of the Atlantic in the warm waters of the Gulf Stream. Now, as we take a look, that system exits, and another one moves onshore. See the swirling mass? I'm rocking it back and forth here, and that's off the coast of California and Washington State, as well as Oregon. That's going to bring very wet weather to all of the elevated terrain. It will bring white weather to the mountains. From the Sierra Nevada all the way through Snoqualmie Pass in Washington, heavy snow, that moves into the Northern Rockies. The date on this is the 23rd, and that's the weekend. Watch what this system goes as it spreads over the Rockies and through the woods. 
and it's going to grandma's house. And if grandma lives in the Dakotas, anywhere through South Dakota and points north, we could have some impending wintry weather, particularly on Sunday into Monday. And the faster these systems move out of the area, then the lower the snowfall potential is. But look at this one, kind of parking in Iowa and Minnesota and then moving north. Do you see that? So this means enhanced rainfall potential here in the Central Plains. We're talking the Missouri, the Mississippi River Valleys. The Great Lakes look to be very wintry as we go through the upcoming weekend. That's the weekend here of the uh, 24th and 25th. And the impacts keep going into the work week. Look at this system slowly working its way eastward, dumping heavy and copious amounts of rain. Look what's hitting the West Coast. After a little bit of a break, there could be another system that works its way. And now this model, this is way far out, but we're approaching Easter Sunday here, folks, as we get into the weekend of the 30th and 31st. Look at this, another potential system working its way through the Northern Plains. That's so far out, I wouldn't put a lot of credence in that, but it certainly does two things. It shows us a more active pattern. Rhonda, good to have you on board from Minnesota and Indian Shores, Florida. Rebecca, good to see you on board. Wondering what we could expect coming home on Sunday if home is here in the Northern Plains. We have a wintry system making its way through the area and the region, and it could impact travel, even air travel, in places like Minneapolis, Fargo, uh, and the storm system will be moving out of the Rockies as well. Its impacts in Denver are yet to be seen as we re rewind this forecast through. To answer your question, again, this is what makes Hutch's weather right here on YouTube interactive. So here's a storm system just developing right here as it works its way through, getting heading into the weekend. And here we go. As we go through the 24th, see the Rocky Mountain snow. It looks like most of the snow will be in the mountains and not particularly in the metro area of Denver until we get to the evening of the 24th and 25th. So keep that in mind. There could be some impacts to your trip and your travels home. Rebecca, thanks so very much for your question. Now, let's take a look at the track of the snowfall potential on three different models. Okay, To do that, I'm going to start with a look at the good old-fashioned Canadian model. It sometimes is the uh, uh, nice to look at three, and then we can get an idea of what the consensus is of three different models, rather than just looking at the European and the American. Here we go. Let's look at this. Again, this is the Canadian model. What we're looking at here is the colors, and the brighter these colors are, this is only through Monday, okay, after this upcoming weekend, one week from today. Look at the redonkulous snow working its way out of British Columbia into northern parts of the Rockies of Montana. There is significant drought going on in Montana. They will take all of this moisture, every last flake of it, and it'll be flaky. Take a look at the trend for snow here. This has a snow working its way through the Dakotas, North and South Dakota. The farther north you go, though, diminishes rapidly. Same thing as you go south, as it may be more rain there. This moves into Minnesota and delivers snow beyond Monday. So this is only through Monday where I think the models can be compared a little bit. When we look farther than that, the European and Canadian models don't go out as far as the American model. So keep that in mind. That's why I cut it off at Monday. Now, heading out to the East Coast, look at this. Look at the lake effect snow that could be in store for upstate New York, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine. I stand a chance as well as the UP of Michigan and much of Wisconsin with this weather making system as we go through the upcoming weekend. That is the weekend of the 23rd and 24th. Again, Drop a question in here. Let me know if you have any. Now let's look at another model, shall we? Okay, this one is the European model. Notice the difference? Not quite as bright with the colors, meaning a little less snowfall potential according to this model. And it does have more Rocky Mountain snow. And look at the bright spots here in the Sierra Nevada. So once again, the Truckee area, you could get slammed with some significant snow as we go through the next week as this these sequence of systems work their way on to the Pacific coast. This will be everywhere from northern Washington state, southern British Columbia, all the way down through the Sierra Nevada and the northern Rockies. Otherwise, the pattern looks fairly similar, right? With more enhanced snow in Wisconsin and Minnesota than the Dakotas from the weekend system. Still upstate New York snow potential from the systems as we work our way through the next one week. That is the Canadian model. So the Canadian model and the European model looks similar. Notice the difference in this, the American model? Check it out. Boom. 
complete southern shift to the track. So the main storm working out of the Rockies a little farther south, that could be bad news for Denver, Colorado, and Cheyenne, Wyoming, if that low tracks a little bit farther south. Keep that in mind. Still mountain snows off the west coast, and we still will have good amounts of snow across the northern Rockies in Montana. But as we spread east, Look at this. Instead of northern Wisconsin, we're talking most of South Dakota, southern Minnesota. Look at Iowa. Oh my gosh, the entire state of Iowa could be in store for some heavier snow. Now, here's what I'll say about this, the American model compared to the European. The farther out in time we go, in my opinion and with my experience of 30 years of forecasting, well, the European model does a little bit better job with the track of the storms and sometimes the intensity of the storms as well as we get into the latter time frames. Thanks for your stars. Thanks for your hearts. I love your likes as well. I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. I've been broadcasting on television for the better part of 30 years. I have taught meteorology at the college level for the better part of 20 years to college students in the Northern Plains and spent a little time in research as well. The first five years of my career working out of the Boulder Labs in the Boulder, Colorado area of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Now, check it out. This model, the American model, has more snow, a heavier, brighter signature here in the Northeastern United States as well. So there are differences in the model. Again, this is a week out, but a wintry trend is taking place here. Now, let's take a look at one model because for all of our viewers in the Southern Plains, what about the chance for severe weather? To do that, I will take a look at the one week forecast. We're gonna focus on that European model and we're going to look at the details of the Southern Plains with this particular run for you folks watching in the South where you're dealing with Frost and freeze warnings and advisories? What? Yes, this cold front knifing through has brought frigid air to places like Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, all the way down to the Gulf Coast, Louisiana too. Ooh, that's cold and it isn't very warm. And there's a severe lack of heat. So that cold air is diving south. Here is a look at the track of the storm as we go through the next couple of days. We'll have one working out of Cal Calgary and into the Dakotas. There it is, that's Thursday. Now, as we go into the week, midweek, Look at the storms that develop in Texas, working through Louisiana. More rain, possibly some potent thunderstorms in the farther southern areas as well. That gets us into Thursday, Friday. And as we take a look at the central plains now, we know the snow impact up north. We've gone over that. Here's the thunderstorm chances. They appear to increase as this low pressure system gets out of the Rockies and the cold, dry air starts wrapping around the backside, interacting with this Gulf of Mexico warm humid air. Look at the southeast United States as wave one works its way through. This is Saturday and Sunday of the upcoming weekend. It looks wet more than potentially super duper severe, but in a situation like this, we do have some rotation or spin or shear in the atmosphere, so we'll keep you posted as to that. It's too far out to get specific about the threats, but we do see Showers and thunderstorms along this cold front that will be working out of the Rockies and into the Northern Plains that could bring strong thunderstorms, and dare I say, some could be severe as we go through Sunday and into Monday. And look at this, as this low trails out, the model has thunderstorms firing from Iowa. And remember, we talked about Iowa having a fair amount uh, at a chance of some good time snow as we go through the next week. This is Monday as we go through the morning hours, storms firing into the afternoon and flying through the southern plains and the Mississippi Delta all the way through eastern Missouri. And then here's another chance at snow. Watch where this low goes, by the way. Boom, straight north, enhancing and sticking the snow because the snow will be persistent in parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa for some time with a lot of winds too. So here's what we know as we summarize all of this nonsense over the next several days. As a meteorologist, the farther out we get here, well, the lower confidence I have. But here's what I do have confidence in. Number one, a more active pattern. For the West Coast in particular, every storm is going to hit the West Coast that makes its way off the Pacific, and it's going to bring elevated snow to the elevated terrain of the mountains on the West Coast. The Rockies will get these systems, and that's where they develop and enhance. Depending on precisely where in the Rockies those storms move out of, whether it's Wyoming or Colorado, will dictate who sees snow and who sees severe potential down south as well as they move on to the central and southern plains. 
wet weather taking hold. Now, as I take a look at this model, I'm going to close with a look at the moisture potential with the systems for the southeastern United States. So let's take a look at the uh, precipitation quantity. Now, you're going to see wet, wet signatures in the northern plains, but remember, that's snow. And we're only going to go through Monday of next week because the models beyond that, well, it gets a little bit hard to put too much credence into what they're saying. So here we go as we go into Monday afternoon and evening. And you can, whoop, let me lock it in here. Okay, let's put this in. So this is Monday at midnight. Monday night at midnight, one week from today. The moisture is plentiful right through the Missouri River Valley, right through the Mississippi Delta in the Southern Plains, not as much here in the Appalachians and the Ohio River Valley. The Northern Plains stands to pick up some significant moisture, but not where the drought is at its worst. In Montana, the drought is very bad. White snow looks to be in store for you. Coastal California, Oregon, as well as Washington State, all will see abundant moisture over the upcoming one week with intermittent amounts in and around the mountains. Remember, the upslope side of these storms, where these storms are pushing the air up the mountains, be it on the west side or west slopes of the mountains or east slopes of the mountains, will pick up abundant moisture from them as they work their way through. And the southeast United States looks to be big winners. And remember, upstate New York, on up into Maine, it will be falling as, well, snow and not rain. That's a look at the weather in the upcoming week. We'll update you, but just know this, over the next seven days, particularly as we get into Sunday of next week and Monday of next week, we'll have an increased chance for some very, very snowy and wet weather. And there could be a system coming for Easter as well. That's too far out to get specific on, but we'll be watching it right here on Hutch's Weather. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your subscriptions. Remember to hit the little dingle bell, ding, 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 to get a notification of when Hutch is on talking about your